Good day folks, everything new under the sun. What you're looking at is a solar panel and the solar panels on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, where I am, this this uh, particular one is showing and it's a 400 watt solar panel made by Jinko. Haven't heard of the company before. <clears throat> uh, but this guy is uh, selling them for um, 250 a piece, Canadian dollars of course. Which is a good deal. Now this is a 24 volt uh, versus uh, a 12 volt uh, um, solar panel so it's not for charging 12 volt batteries um, or, or a 12 volt uh, solar uh, control charge controller rather um, this is more for a larger household system but you can use it uh, on um, a smaller 12 volt system if you have an MPPT charge controller which takes a higher voltage and uh, switches that changes that voltage over you know the the 15 16 18 volts needed for charging a 12 volt battery and 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 switches that extra voltage into amperage so increasing your amperage that's what MPPT does so uh, that MPPT was originally designed um, to take the excess solar and the voltage coming out of panels and convert that into amperage so you can still charge your batteries and make get the most uh, use out of your um, your solar input and not waste any of that any of that incoming energy but what it also means is that you can use solar panels uh, meant for uh, you know other systems larger um, battery banks or different voltage systems and use them in your 12 volt system you know you have to pay attention to uh, the voltage now I've got uh, old EP solar charge con uh, and old EP solar charge controller uh, and it is a 20 amp charge controller and I, I forget the exact specs I've had it for uh, years it sits in my shed uh, it, it uh, provides light to my shed my shed is off-grid uh, you know for my lawnmower and that sort of thing <clears throat> and I'm not sure exact the maximum voltage I'm gonna I'm gonna say like 50 volts 60 volts or something and that's how many volts it will uh, take as input for uh, a 12 volt for charging a 12 volt battery effectively and it takes that 50 volts again switches whatever it doesn't need anything over uh, you know uh, 15 16 volts switches that into current or amperage um, I, I, I say all that because this is why diesel is becoming scarce there are diesel shortages the price of goods and services are going to go up so now is the time to purchase these things the other thing is that diesel uh, energy uh, gasoline even heating oil is expensive now you don't need it for summer but winter is coming and this is only the start of the shortages in diesel um, the increase in gas prices which is double for you know gasoline pretty much uh, and huge amounts for diesel and that means heating oil in uh, the winter is going to be very expensive and I expect because of the increase the massive increase you know is it near 100% increase um, that many people are gonna say you know what I'm not gonna burn my oil furnace I'm going to go ahead and use electric. Now, not solar. They're just going to get electric baseboard heaters from Canadian Tire or, or Walmart, wherever, and say, you know what, this is cheaper to heat my house than using oil because oil is so expensive. What's the next thing that happens then? Well, the electric companies. A, you potentially have uh, brownouts, blackouts, because now everybody's switching to electric because oil is so expensive. Uh, and that means they're going to increase uh, their prices and or there could be brownouts because uh, a, a massive load there's warnings already about uh, Texas Indiana California having rolling blackouts in the summer because of the use of air conditioners uh, and the electricity usage there because of the, the extra heat waves coming through well similar here except uh, uh, opposite for winter I suspect uh, there will be um, a, a lack of electricity and if there is lots of electricity it's going to cost a lot because you know if, if all other energy is increasing in price you can bet that electricity will as well so do you want your home electricity bill to double in price this is where it's gonna go I inevitably because everybody's gonna start switching over to whatever the next cheapest solution is now the cheapest solution is to go with wood um, but uh, that's not possible or attainable or even on the radar of very many people I say all that to say this now is the time before people realize that oh they can create their own electricity with solar panels and maybe save on some of their bills with a little bit of elbow grease and know-how before they realize that 
Go out and get these while they're cheap. This one is fairly cheap. It's a big wattage solar panel, uh, good for a rooftop. You can even put a single one of these on a camper, for example. And as long as you have a, a decent MPPT charge controller, you can certainly make use of this. This is this is a spec sheet on the back, 405 watts maximum power. So that's that's the ideal conditions, direct sunlight. And the maximum uh, cur power current, uh, uh, 9.65 amps. So you need at least a 10 amp uh, charge controller for this. Um, and the maximum power voltage for this would be, uh, f this is a 42 uh, volt. So that would easily work underneath the 50, 60 volt max uh, voltage inputs for the MPPT charge controller. Um, and so effectively it would cut that 42 volts there down to, uh, you know, 16, 18, 20, whatever volts for uh, whatever it needs to charge the battery um, and increase that amperage at the battery uh, from, uh, you know, 10 amps up to maybe 12, 15 amps. Um, so that, that's, that's how it, it would operate. And uh, so it, it's a great option. And this is, this is cheap. This is very cheap. If you go on Amazon right now, um, you can, for, for $250, you would only get uh, maybe 200 watts uh, in a brand new uh, 12 volt panel. Yeah, basically two uh, 12 volt panels 100 watts each um, to make 200 watts so for the same price you can get basically double the wattage because this guy happens to be trying to get rid of these particular ones which are more meant for a solar installation on a house um, but again a little bit of knowledge know-how understanding um, basic uh, electricity volts amps uh, wattage that sort of thing and a little bit of tinkering in your shed uh, with some of your solar uh, power options and you can uh, certainly make use of this uh, and uh, when electricity does go high or if there's a blackout uh, because of the energy consumption or if there's a cyber attack, which is uh, very, very likely on our grid uh, and or if you have grid uh, cascading grid power failures, you're going to be the one who has some options. You're going to be the one if you have this set up uh, to be able to charge maybe your friends and your family's uh, cell phones uh, to power some lights in your house. You could even potentially... With a, uh, with a minimum setup, you could shut off all uh, significant loads in your house and basically uh, power uh, your house with a, a very, very small array. Now, you're not going to be able to be running your, your fridge and your freezer, but you're going to be able to run uh, you know, an LED light uh, in your rooms and then shut that off when you go downstairs and, and turn on a light downstairs, etc. You're going to be able to run um, limited things. You can also run if you have a a decent uh, inverter, um, your your well pump, for example, if, if you're not on city water. If you're on city water, generally there's going to be water pressure anyways because there's, the water's going to be in water towers, which is just gravity feed. Um, uh, that will be used up over time, and they if, the, if there's no power to the water towers, they're not going to be able to pump more water into the water towers. But, you know, for a period of 24 hours, uh, there will be water pressure at your taps. But uh, for those off-grid off or out in the boonies who have their own septic and, and uh, well pumps, um, this is absolutely a viable option. And you can power, if you have a battery bank, you can power your uh, deep freezers and your regular fridge, say for 24 hours until you figure out what you're going to do next and, and have some indication as to what the next step is uh, for your power needs. Maybe shift some of that food out or use it up or um, uh, you know, can it, uh, or whatever you want, uh, but you have, uh, it's get you, uh, uh, some time to, uh, figure out what you're going to do with that. So, uh, you know, a perfect time under the radar, um, these sorts of panels, you know, 400 watt, uh, that would be, uh, excellent. That would be all you need in most cases for a camper, uh, for a small off grid shed, even more than you need. That's, that's more than you need because that's going to pull, be pulling a lot of amperage and you'll be able to charge, a lot of your electronics and you know for a battery bank um, if, if stuff hits the fan uh, you'd be surprised how many batteries you have how many do you have a car in your driveway that means you have a big lead acid battery that you could pull out in an emergency charge it with some solar panels just have solar panels hanging around if you have 12 volt solar panels you can pretty much plug them directly into your uh, battery and just charge them directly without a charge controller. Now, you have to watch them, make sure they don't overcharge because, uh, or, or have, you know, over voltage or something, but uh, in, in a quick and dirty fashion, you could charge a battery that way and then power some electronics off it or, uh, you, you know, use the USB or the 12 volt adapter in your car. So there's different ways you can do this. Uh, and it's, it's real quick and dirty if you have a basic understanding 
uh, of solar power, how to hook these together. And then, I, like I said, if you have a, a charge controller, um, then, then you're uh, set. Now, in terms of um, electromagnetic pulse uh, weapon, chances are um, that's not going to happen. There's easier ways to take a country out. Um, honestly speaking, and even if it did happen, uh, the location that was affected is going to be limited. It's not going to be the whole of North America that has every chip fried, which means that it's likely that uh, electronics in most of the country will be working, um, but uh, you know communications will be down because um, as one part goes down, um, it's going to cut off uh, access and connection to another part but you'll still be able to use your charge controller uh, solar panels uh, etc and so the likelihood of uh, something burning out the uh, chips and these sorts of things is low so it's a great uh, fallback it's a great safety and uh, before the winter comes before everybody switches over to electricity and as soon as I do as soon you know before the price skyrockets in electricity um, you have an option to where if you know if you can't pay your bills shut off your electricity and you don't have to call the power company just flip the main breaker uh, in your house and uh, and then just uh, you know start plugging in some basic things to a jackery or a solar generator of some sort or your homemade lead acid battery with charge controller and uh, some basic uh, you know 12 volt ports or USB ports or even a small inverter and uh, you could uh, you could survive uh, no problem with a very very small very simple to set up solar power system so if you'd like to know more of that or if you have questions about it uh, let me know um, it's a it's an excellent skill to have something you should know about and now is the prime time two hundred and fifty dollars for four hundred watts of solar as long as again as long as you have basic know-how how to hook it up um, then this would be a great option and so I'm definitely looking into uh, getting at least uh, one of these uh, just as a absolute backup I have four hundred watts in, in 100 watt panels currently for my jackery um, <clears throat> those are 12 volt um, you know they output about 18 vo 18 volts I think or 20 volts um, you need the higher voltage to charge the the 12 volts uh, but uh, you know for for a single panel on a camper or on the top of a shed that is stationary these are quite large but uh, in a stationary situation uh, these uh, are excellent uh, ways to get uh, cheap uh, per watt prices on solar all right. Thanks, guys. I've talked enough. I hope that helps, uh, and we'll see you guys in the next video.